Quite backwards. Yeah. Why? Because you look like you're holding onto your youth. <laughs> you know how Raph says I say fuck you all the time. Welcome to the podcast. Um, we have gotten back from Japan two weeks ago. Yeah. Or fairly. Wow. Two Stressful weeks. too, pal. <laughs> no, it wasn't too bad. It was very mm. hard. It was long days. Long days. It turned Poured. into a shopping trip slash search for the best ramen trip. Mm, I think I found the best ramen. Don't know if I found the best. Yeah, no, I found the best ramen, <laughs> I reckon. We only gave it a nine and a half, though. Yeah. Because we expected to find a better one. I think we were learning out the scale of judgment during the trip. Mm. Like an eight and above was you don't have to add anything. Mm. No condiments. Yeah. No, no chili, oil, no, no soy. No nothing. Mm. They're eight, eight up. What would, you, what would you rate your tomato ramen now? Well, it's weird because that fucks the scale up because we add a stack of stuff. Mm. But that's kind of the beauty of it. But it's it's very basic. Mm, but it's also, hmm, I don't know. If anyone's spoken to Al about his Japan trip, he will, of course, talk about this tomato ramen that he is obsessed with. I'll fill you in on our Japan information. <laughs> I'm going to blow the spot up. Because now I found a better one and I'm not telling any of you where that is. <laughs> but I'll blow up the ramen spot for the tomato ramen. TikTok blew up my favorite one. Yeah, we found that out when we got there. That sucked. I know. But it is in an area where things can blow up. Yeah. It's like it's Tokyo Central. Where, Harajuku, right? Yeah, in the back streets of Harajuku. Yeah, the back streets of Harajuku are not that hard to discover. And no. some clown <laughs> put it on TikTok. And there was a queue out the front and I got to of the... like little, half white people. And mostly half, white people. Yeah. yeah, I got to the front at the machine and the guy in front of me was just this gibbering English bloke who couldn't, um, couldn't figure out what to order. And I asked him, hey, man, how did you hear about this place? And he went TikTok and I almost cried on the spot, on the side of the road. I was so sad. <laughs> anyway, we ate ramen at Claire's favourite ramen place and had to listen to this pommy twat who was super loud. I shouldn't be saying that. I shouldn't be saying pommy twat, should I? I might offend all our English viewers. <laughs> <laughs> he was, though, and the rest of you are fine. You're going to get us cancelled for, like, political oh, incorrectness. I'm not getting cancelled for calling someone a pom. <laughs> or a twat. No. No way. Um, yeah, but the it was still really good food. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I don't know the name of that place. I've always wanted one of the t-shirts that the dudes wear. Oh, it's a cool The sick shirts and they wear the cool headbands, but the shirts are sick. I don't know what they say. They probably say ramen, I a guess. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> ramen shop or something like that, but yeah, they're cool. Um, but yeah, we had a pretty successful buy trip. I think so, in the end. Yeah. It was hard going at first. Long everything. days. I definitely over-exaggerated how much we could get done in a day. Yeah. Massively. Yeah, it was crazy. We were driving and shopping and driving and shopping and driving. So it was nonstop. It was like 12, 14 hour days, some days. Even longer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I tried even, to not come yeah, into the Even mind. longer. We were waking up in hotels. There was that one night where we went out for dinner at like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. It was actually really hard. People go, oh, you got to go to Japan. Well, it sucked. So <laughs> yeah, our joy during the day was the ramen. Search. The ramen. That's all that kind of kept you motivated was like finding that. We next would good we would ramen. be sorting through clothes and all that kind of stuff, and we'd get to like four o'clock and be like, "Fuck, we haven't eaten lunch." Mm. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, we, it is that Japanese thing though, where nothing opens till ten, so you kind of have the first yeah, three but, hours of the day where you're sitting around. Mm, but we were <laughs> Starbucks and a. 
Oh. <laughs> Starbucks and a glazed donut for breakfast. <laughs> the coffee. Japan, if anyone from Japan's listening, you've got to sort your coffee situation out. It's horrendous. If any Australian. I think it's the milk. Has a business plan, business idea they want to take over to Japan and live over there. Just coffee. Import Australian milk. alternative milks. Or just milk. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I haven't tasted I, their normal. Well, milk. I, don't, I haven't tasted their normal milk either. Well, I did back in the day. Hokkaido's, I think there's just a milk issue. Yeah, definitely an alternative milk issue. It seems yeah. like they're like soy's and almond milks or whatever. Any of the other milks. Someone needs to tell them not to froth the soy milk to past burning point. It's more than that. I think there's something missing in the ingredient. We got told that by that. We the oils. Another Englishman who was working in. The oils in the. Something's wrong. Milk. Yeah. I think they take the grape. I don't think. I think it's called. I think it's actually called rapeseed oil that is in those alternative milks, but it mm. makes it a little bit thicker. And I think that's removed or something's not there. But I know with the soy milk. Shocking coffee. If you oversteam soy milk here, you get like. You can curdle it and it gets that thick layer, but they do it so far beyond that point that you actually don't get like, you know, half a centimeter. You get like an mm, inch thick terrible. of foam on the and top. There's sugar in the milk or something. There's just something so horribly wrong. I've never had a good coffee in Japan. Facts. The ice weren't too bad. I don't drink ice coffee because I'm not a 12 year old. <laughs> Really? No, I don't drink cold coffee. It's insane. Like, I think I'm just more trendy. Last than time you. I checked, coffee's meant to be hot. Trendy. <laughs> Tragic, you mean? <laughs> Similar. They both start with T. Anyway, Claire, I got a question for you about this Japan trip. Oh gosh. Uh, I don't have one. Which is your left and which is your <laughs> right hand? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, can't, she can't answer it quickly. Why? Right. She, oh, yeah, good. that's well done. Well done. Learnt it. Claire is <laughs> the co pilot, and I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Got it by the end of the trip. She, on the last hour, <laughs> we're taking the rental car back from the hotel. We finally get to the last hotel, unload everything. We're taking the rental car back. I drive out of the hotel driveway. And Claire says something along the lines of, I know the exact sentence. Turn left, go 150 was- meters and take the left at the end of the bridge. And I looked at her like, holy shit, we've been here seven or eight days. That is the first clear instruction I've been given the whole time. <laughs> it was like the distance was right. The left was right. The second left was right. Everything was right. It took her the entire trip to learn how to give directions. We were following this blue line, and when roads are stacked on top of roads, like they are in Japan, following the blue line doesn't work because you're on the wrong level. The one so time that we fucked horrendous. up and we were just doing loops at a <laughs> highway intersections, and I got so confused about which way we'd come was, from because we did about eight circles backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hardest part of the trip was getting from A to B repetitively. It was harsh. But we got there. We bought everything. We need, so there's some really cool stuff, like yep. seven or 800 items. Mm-hmm. So we don't actually know because no one's counted, but. No. Yeah, we got a lot of cool winter stuff, a lot of cool autumn stuff, and a lot of cool summer stuff. Yeah, a bit of everything. Mm, no spring. Bit. There's some short, heaps of short sleeve button ups. Yeah, not and a lot like of spray sports jackets or jerseys anything, right? and tees and stuff like that. Yeah, we got some killer sports jerseys. Al got a great jacket. Al did get a great jacket. <laughs> it's fucking hideous. <sighs> it's already been put to the test. I've asked a few people. Some people are already ready to part with money. For this <laughs> I'm getting past it. Dude, look at this thing. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't get a lot better than that. It's thick felt. It's not felt, bro. What would you call that? I don't know. Felt. Fake grass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love it. I still love it. It's heavy and we shouldn't have bought it because it costs more to get back than it's worth probably. Yeah, look at this thing. It's rad. It looks like an elf would wear it. Well, maybe an elf would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and your corduroy I, suit jacket. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for a black corduroy 
suit jacket. And I know there's someone out there that's looking for that. We're going to have one available soon. I think it got shipped though. It did. Yeah, so it's a couple of months away. It's mm. going slow boat back to Australia. Mm-hmm. Claire bought some rubbish too. Oh, like the V-neck sports jersey. Yeah, that everybody likes. <laughs> I thought it was horrendous. But anyway, we have bought. We don't buy for ourselves over there. We buy for everyone. And someone's going to love that jacket. You can all yep. bag me out all you want. I bet you that thing sells. Mm-hmm. And the guy who buys it's going to, that will be his I everyday jacket. If you've got dreadlocks. And you like a little bit of meth. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the jacket for you. I don't If ble- that sounds like you, <laughs> we've got the outfit for you. Right. Harsh. <laughs> I think someone's going to be stoked on that. Whoever walks out of it with this, if they haven't listened to the podcast. <laughs> and then they hear it later. That's yeah, better. they're like, yeah, fuck. Good. Better start doing some math. <laughs> yeah. Grow my hair. I'm grow my hair out and never brush it or wash it. Just, sorry, mum. Anyway, <laughs> what is the point of this episode? I don't know. I don't really. We can't give too much away about how we're doing these buy trips. No, no, we're not going to give away anything. But we can give away that we're planning to do another one. April. Yeah. May, April probably. Mm. Which will be more though to ship, so things won't get here until midwinter. Yeah, but it's probably going to be twice the size mm. of a buy. Yeah, more items, less bulk, I guess. We'll see. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Look, the reality is that Japan is a country with 140 million people, 130 million people that mm. live very small. So when they buy something new, they have to get rid of something. They don't live in places where you can have four closets and, you know, have a a mountain of walk-in wardrobes, it's not going to happen. So they tend to get rid of really good quality used clothing. And that's what we go over to buy. We do buy a lot of vintage, but we also buy good quality. I'm sourcing it from particular places. Yeah, good quality used as much as it is vintage. Yeah, trying to give it a second life so it Mm. doesn't end up in landfill. Some of this stuff's better quality than what we can buy from brands new. Like the definitely higher quality product Mm. was made 10 years ago than what it is now, it seems. I like it because it also gives a twist (coughs) to fashion that's not in every mall store and things like that. It's just it's a fresh, unique item that you can use yeah and you're not going to go to the pub and see six guys wearing the same shirt as you which yep. has happened mm-hmm. like if you go to manly at the wrong time of year depending on which brands warehouse sales happen that week there's six guys wearing the same surf brand shirt or whatever it happens all the time there are a lot of warehouse sales that happen around here and you can get caught out down at Bucketies and there's six blokes all wearing exactly the same T-shirt or exactly the same button-up shirt. It's tragic. So don't be one of them. Come and buy some vintage stuff from us. Yep. I should do carpet ads. <laughs> call, Here call, you go. carpet. <laughs> Fuck. Fucking, can someone... This is a public service announcement. Can someone please come and buy this jacket to prove everybody else wrong? Thank you. I think that we're going to have to do. was approved by me. We're going to have to do like a this or that and compare items that I bought and you bought. I'll win because I bought more, I think. I, <laughs> no, I probably didn't. That's not true. <laughs> uh, um, so I've actually got a question for you. Oh, God. How's your veganism going now that you're back from Japan? Yeah, was, I'm back to being vegan. How was the ramen you had the other night? Oh, okay, that just did add a little bit of meat in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 95% back to being vegan. I've had, I've actually had a ramen since I got back. And if you're eating ramen, you're not a vegan. No. There's only one vegan ramen in the whole of Japan that I've ever found that's truly vegan. And that's yeah. that tomato-based tomato. one. Tomato salt ramen. Yeah. It's just. It's tomato. not even miso. No, no. It's clear liquid. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be a vegan in Japan. You can. I'm sure there's vegans out there that are going to get really upset with me for saying that, but good luck. Have fun. I don't care. If you guys want to go over there and scratch around trying to find food, go for it. I went in Rome. I'm just, I've just got to eat fish and pork broth. I tend to try to avoid the giant chunks of meat. It's not like you're eating 
off a bone over there. That mm. doesn't happen anyway. There was one ramen where you and I both ate Dude, all of the meat in the bowl. Because it was so <laughs> insane. I was like, good. I'm not going to do this. And I had like, I got the tiniest little bit because it had fallen off. And it melted and I, in your mouth. I was just like, holy yeah. fuck, <laughs> yeah. I'm eating this. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a couple of places we found that was so good. How did we get back on the ramen? Because oh, you asked me about my veganism. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, if you don't like ramen, Japan's not your country. Mm. We, did, we, did, we only had the one sushi. other meal. I think we ate ramen every meal apart from maybe one. No, we had that like a la carte sushi. Oh, yeah, that was shit. No, the one we did. Oh, no, the good one. The was good great, one. But we had the. We went to that really bad sushi yeah, restaurant. Yeah, there was like too. takeaway kind of one. That was, was shit. It was a train. That was horrible. Was don't go so, to sushi train. Yeah, don't go to sushi train. If you're going to go to sushi over there, this is part for our Japanese podcast. This is how to eat in Japan. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this can, podcast was meant to be about, but it's how to eat in Japan yeah, now. We can do <laughs> we can do that later. We'll talk more about this later. But if you're going to go to Japan, don't <laughs> eat <laughs> at chain places. Yeah. Unless and you if, like a burger. They, there's one place called Moss Burger. <laughs> They do a vegan burger. When you hit that point where you're like, you got to just get some fucking calories. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Protein, you know, a anything. slice of a vegetable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. You get a piece of tomato. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a lettuce leaf. What's that burger? That mo- Moss Burger. Ta- why are we talking about this? There's a place called Moss Burger that does a tofu based jalapeno, jalapeno, jalapeno burger mm. that is off its head. It's really good. It's really good and it's vegan and it, you wouldn't even um, No. I actually have a question for someone. Who's it for? Because there's only the, one person here. The viewers. If anyone knows where to buy Yamazaki whiskey, ah. we searched the whole time. Yeah, I think we didn't. I don't think we really did. We were so busy. I don't think we really searched properly and found We went the into that shops. one Don Quixote. That's not searching. That's going into one no, shop. No, but we were looking in supermarkets and not the place to buy a five hundred dollar bottle of. It's not five hundred dollars over there. No, here it is though. Yeah, but over there it's like a hundred, right? Still, that in Japan, like you can buy bottles for six bucks, so it's top shelf. Yeah. We just didn't find. It. I think we were just looking in the wrong spots. But even when we were there at the start of the year, we were looking. Yeah, it was hard to. There was a problem back then, though. That we were told there was a shortage or something. Is there not a shortage anymore? Well, I saw a guy at the post office when we were sending some stuff somewhere that had bottles of it being shipped overseas. So I I think a lot of people are... He didn't speak English. But yeah, we should have asked him. That would have been a hilarious conversation. (laughs) Him speaking Japanese, (laughs) us speaking English. What would have gone wrong? Google Translate. (laughs) <laughs> Where'd you buy that, bro? And who are you sending it to? I'll give you an extra fifty. Change the address. To my address. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard to find. We got something. No, I haven't tried. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't opened it yet. No, it looked pretty good. It was about a hundred Australian dollars. No, we paid a hundred yen. Yeah, yeah, in a Austra- hundred yen. <laughs> That's a dollar. For those of you that aren't familiar with the exchange rate, this is the left-right thing again. (laughs) How much did we pay? We paid... (laughs) 10,000 yen. Yen. Which is about 105 bucks. Mm -hmm. In Japan. Then we flew back into Australia and it was... 200 duty-free. Yep. So that's probably a 250-ish bottle. Mm Mm-hmm. So it should still be pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, are we finishing this? Because I, I don't, don't feel like we talked about the clothes at all. No, this is a bit of ramble episode. Mm. Anyway, if you want some vintage clothes, <laughs> it's trickling into the store now. If you would like a jacket <laughs> to disapprove. <laughs> There's some really cool stuff. And the jacket is not a reflection of the overall purchase. We're um, getting it out at about 100 items a week, roughly, are going into the store. Yeah. So come and have a look. They're all on the website. And uh, drop down, clothing, vintage clothes, I believe, is how you find them on our website. I'm going home. I'm over it. Let's do it. Who's signing off?
What do we do to sign off again? Nothing. Mm. We just go goodbye. See you next time on the broadcast. Ooh, I think we'll have a guest door. next time. Who's the guest? Portnoy. That's going to be the funnest one. Louis said he'd do one today oh, yeah. too. So, yeah, we've got a few coming. Imagine All if we got Louis of, and Portnoy. No, on. not at the same time. It's Can't too be done. much. No, it'd be way too much. You guys would all have a meltdown. I wouldn't get through it. <laughs> It'd just be too much. Now, Raph says I say fuck you all the time. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs>